Fellas, UFC 304 just wrapped up, and I've got a lot of mixed opinions on this card. There were some moments on this card that I really think made the pay-per-view worth it, and made for some really good moments on the pay-per-view, and then there were other moments that I think just don't really belong on the pay-per-view, and kind of ruin the pay-per-view, to be completely honest. So we're going to be going through the five best and the five worst moments that come from UFC 304, in my opinion, the moments that made the card, the moments that broke the card, and yeah, we'll just start off with the worst moments. Now, at number five for the worst moment, in my opinion, was the wasted crowd. Now, the UK always get hyped up for having one of the best crowds in the UFC. Oh, if you've never been to a card in the UK, you need to witness it live. They are so wild. They're so li loud and wild. That didn't really seem like it for this card. Apart from the Paddy Pimler and the Tom Aspinall fight, I didn't really hear anything significant from the UK crowd. And I think there's multiple reasons. I think one of the reasons could be the lack of finishes, which I'll talk about in a second. But another big reason is the fact that, I mean, elephant in the room, the card is at 6 a.m. local time. If you expect the locals to go to the UK and watch an event from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning, they're not going to be the loudest crowd and it's not going to be the full potential. And when you go back and you watch cards like UFC Aspinall versus Volkov and some of the old UFC London events, the crowd will way louder um so the fact that it's on 6m and the annoying thing is as well is that in the post-fight press conference, Dana White seems like he's got no plans of ever changing the start time, so it seems like 11pm to 6am is going to be the new local time for UFC events in the UK, um, which is a shame because I think the crowd were kind of wasted, and again, I'm not saying it was necessarily the crowd's fault, and I'm not saying the card was absolutely ecstatic, but it just felt like a bit of a wasted crowd. We've got this insane crowd in the UFC, and you're forcing the locals to go from 11pm till 6am, but then the Abu Dhabi crowd, which are some of the most dead crowds in the UFC, get, get it in local time. It doesn't really make sense. So at number five, I'm going to go with the wasted potential for the crowd. At number four, I'm going with the reoccurring foul throughout the card and no point being taken. I think in every single fight on UFC 3 or 4, maybe apart from the Tom Aspinall fight, there was some form of foul. Um, a lot of it was the fact that there was a fence grab in nearly every single fight. A lot of warnings. Nobody got a point taken away. I mean, in the first fight of the card, Shauna Bannon, she grabbed the fence like six times and never got a point taken away. There was Mohamed Makayev grabbing Manuel Cap's pants, pretty much taking them off in the middle of the octagon. Didn't get any, you know, point taken away from him. There were just multiple fouls as well throughout the card. There was an eye poke as well. And it's just irritating as well, and especially with these new gloves as well for the eye pokes. It's kind of a shame when the new gloves are literally designed to oppose eye pokes. So the fact that there was a reoccurring foul in every single fight and there was somehow no point taken away was kind of frustrating. Leon Edwards getting dunked on his head as well. Leon Edwards, I don't know, there were just multiple fouls throughout the card that I think didn't necessarily ruin the card, but it wasn't good to see, and it definitely didn't make a good look on the gloves of the UFC. So that's going in number four. At number three... I'm going with the lack of finishes on UFC 304. When the early prelims started, I thought this was going to be one of those cards that were amazing. And I keep bringing up UFC Aspinall versus Volkov, but I keep bringing it up because this card had like a finish in nearly every single fight. It set the roof off the place. And I almost thought that was going to be happening at UFC 304 because in the early prelims, we had Mick Parkin get a finish, Modestus Bakowskis get a finish, Sam Patterson get a finish. And I was like, okay, we're off to a good start. And then the prelims started. Not a single finish on the prelims and the only finishes on the main card were Paddy Pimlet and Tom Aspinall. So it just felt like the the U that it was just off to a bit of a bad start. And then the prelims there were seven straight decisions, and I think there was only five finishes on the entire card. And for a UK event when the standard is UFC Aspinall versus Volkov, it's kind of a shame. Good for Tom Aspinall for getting the finish because he is the definition of a finisher. Good that Paddy Pimlet got the finish as well, but the lack of finishes definitely kind of slowed the momentum for the card. And I think that again is why the crowd might have not been as loud as we once expected them to be. So the lack of finishes on UFC 304 in my opinion definitely makes for one of the worst moments and I think yeah it just should have been a lot more especially for the fact that there was 100k on the line Dana White said this in the post fight press conference there is an 100k bonus on the line you've got to push a little bit of a pace I'm not saying you have to be all guns blazing and throw the kitchen sink out of there but come on at least have some form of urgency to get a win at least try and entertain the crowd somewhat you're in Manchester on a pay-per-view the biggest pay-per-view in UK history you've got a bonus of 100k on the line which by the way is never happening again go for it go for the win and it just seemed like no fighters did especially the Kaya versus Manel Cap fight, so that's going in the number three worst moments to come from this card. And talking of Makaya and Manel Cap, that is at number two. Mohamed Makaya and Manel Cap massively disappointed on this card. 
This was the fact that I thought I thought was going to boost the flyweight division, make flyweight great again. I thought this was going to be the fight that started, you know, the, the 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 big fights in the flyweight division. They had so much hype going into it. They had a massive rivalry. They had this big build up that the UFC for some reason didn't really want to show at the press conference, but they had a massive rivalry. They were trying to fight each other at the weigh-ins in the fighter hotel, even minutes before they were about to fight in the octagon. They had to be separated by security. I thought we were about to see an absolute flyweight war, and the winner of this could happily go on and fight Pantoja. That wasn't the case. This was one of the biggest snooze fests of the night, and in general, just one of the biggest disappointments to come from this card. Mohamed Mikhaev, he did the bare minimum in the fight, save for Manel Cap. I know he broke his toe, which is partially why, but this was such a snooze fest. It was just, it's like watching Adesanya versus Yo Romero part two. Just a leg kick and a head kick every now from uh, Mohamed Mikhaev. Manel Cap backing him up against the cage and landing a shot in the clinch every now and then. Mohamed Mikhaev failing a takedown. This was a really, really low action fight, and just super disappointing for the hype that this fight had. Everyone was saying, this should be on the early prelims. This should be on the main card. This is going to be one of the best fights on the card. It's going to save the flyweight division. And that wasn't the case. I'm actually glad this was on the prelims. And you know what? It should have been on the early prelims. What a disappointment, you know, for this card. The amount of hype. That was meant to be one of the best fights on this card. And it hugely disappointed for both fighters. And in my opinion, that is the second worst moment to come from UFC 304. And the number one worst moment to come from UFC 304, in my opinion, is that the welterweight title picture desperately needs improvement. We can't have Bala Muhammad as a champion. And I already know my comments are going to be filled with Palestinian flags and saying that I'm a Bala Muhammad hater. I'm not hating on Bala Muhammad. I think Leon was equally as boring as Bala Muhammad. The welterweight division ever since Kamar Usman lost the belt has become really, really stale. It has. Leon Edwards hasn't had an entertaining title fight yet. His fight with Usman the second time was boring until he landed the head kick. The third fight was a good technical, you know, technical performance from Leon, but it wasn't anything special. The Kobe fight was boring. And Bilal versus Leon, I mean, it was domination from Bilal, but it wasn't the most entertaining to watch. And if this is going to be the new standard for the welterweight division, I genuinely have no interest in watching this. Shafkat needs to save us. JDM needs to save us because the welterweight title, honestly, it's worse than, like, it's probably the second worst title pitcher in the UFC right now, apart from the situation that's going on with Jones and Aspinall. So, the welterweight division, it desperately needs improvement. Either Bala Mohamed needs to get some finishes or become a little bit more dangerous and maybe be a little bit more risky because I can't bear watching this for every single welterweight title fight. Or Shavkat needs to come and save the day because Leon was boring, Bala was boring, the welterweight recently, the title picture recently has been horrible and I just want Kamar Usman back as champion, dude. Listen, I, I always said that I wanted Leon to become the champion, but I kind of regret saying that now because I want Usman back. Usman, his title error is something to be remembered because he never really had these boring title fights after his like first defense or second defense. After he tossed up to Masvidal, everything was up from there. So the welterweight title picture desperately needs improvement. And in my opinion, that is the worst moment to come from UFC 304. But now we'll go with the best. The best moments to come from UFC 304. We'll be a little bit more positive now. Number five, Mohamed Makaev is officially cut from the UFC. Listen, I've never really been a massive hater from Mohamed Makaev. I mean, he's undefeated as an amateur and professional. He's only like 23 years old and he represents the UK. But I'm not too mad about him getting cut from the UFC. And there's multiple reasons for this. He's always starting fights, you know, backstage. I think what he did to Manel Cat was setting him up, taking a photo and then cheap shotting him was, you know, really low, low thing to do. He's not the most entertaining fighter. His only entertaining fight in the UFC was against his, uh, against Cody Durden in his debut. Mohamed Makayev just isn't that interesting to watch. And you know what? After a performance like that, I'm not too bothered about him getting cut from the UFC. I'm sure it saves the UFC a lot of pay-per-views. I'm sure it gets rid of a boring contender for the UFC and it stops him having to worry about fights going on backstage. So the fact that Mohamed Makayev is cut from the UFC, I'm not too bothered about it. And it seems like we've got one less boring fighter in the flyweight division. Give Tatsuro Tyra his title shot. Give Kai Asakura his title shot. Or just give somebody else his title shot. Maybe the winner of Steve Erseg and Kai Kara France can get it either. Give one of those guys a title shot. Mohamed Makayev is officially cut from the UFC. And if you're wondering where I got that source, Dana White pretty much confirmed in the post-fight press conference that Mohamed Makayev, well, he didn't get cut, but he's not going to be re-signed to the UFC. So, Mohamed Makayev, he's not going to be re-signed to the UFC. And the only place we're going to be seeing that dude is walking out in PFL. The fourth best moment to come from UFC 304 is that Arnold Allen is back in the winning column. You just can't hate Arnold Allen. I don't care if you're an American, a Brit, a Max Holloway fan, whatever you are. You just can't dislike Arnold Allen. He's always in a fun fight. He's a super likable guy. He's funny as well. 
He's just somebody that you can't hate. And I couldn't bear watching Arnold Allen go on a three-fight losing streak because that would have pushed him so far away from the title picture. It probably would have put him like close to getting unranked. And his next fight probably would have been against an unranked fighter. So I'm glad that he got the win in a close fight with Giga Chikete. And now we're probably going to see Arnold Allen fight in the top five where he belongs, which I'm, you know, I'm glad to see. I want to see Arnold Allen back in the top five. So Arnold Allen back in the winning column. I'm glad that he's back in the winning column. And to be honest... I just can't wait to see him fight again, so I'm glad that he's not on a free fight losing streak. Now we're in the top three best moments to come from UFC 304. At number three is Tom Aspinall knocking out Curtis Blades. He is the best heavyweight in the world. And he, ha like Tom Aspinall might be the only dude in that pound for pound list right now that has never actually won an undisputed belt. He is the best. Tom Aspinall is so entertaining to watch. We talk about guys like Makayev not getting finishes. When Tom Aspinall knocked out Curtis Blades, my reaction, and I looked, I looked at a lot of other people's reaction, wasn't absolutely ecstatic like it was against Sergei Pavlovich. And that's nothing to do with Aspinall's knockout. That's just because it's the new normal for Tom Aspinall. Our standard for Tom Aspinall now is getting a finish in about one or two minutes in the fight. He is so good. No heavyweight does this. No heavyweight goes out there and clays every single heavyweight by knocking them out in that fashion. And he just looked amazing out there as he does in every single fight. And the fact that I just don't see Tom Aspinall losing a fight again is insane. It was a great knockout. Um, it kind of saved UFC 304 as well. I mean, that was the core main event. And without Aspinall on the card, it could have really done badly or looked bad on the card. So Tom Aspinall knocking out Curtis Blades, getting the win, securing a, at least we have one champion in the UK. And basically giving us some hype before that boring main event was definitely one of the best moments to come from this card. And then at number two, He's Paddy Pimlet sleeping Bobby Green. Listen, I picked Bobby Green to win. I never really thought Paddy Pimlet was necessarily going to get ranked, but he's done it. He's now in the top 15 rankings, or at least he will be by Tuesday. And it was a great performance by Paddy Pimlet. I remember when Pimlet joined the UFC, and people were saying, oh, you're never going to be... Listen, I'm not going to act like I wasn't one of these people, but people were saying, oh, you're never going to be a ranked fighter. The lightweight division kills you. You need to go back to Cage Warriors. And he's just not only beaten, but finished Bobby Green and secured himself a place in the rankings. I mean, that was an amazing performance. I thought even if Paddy was to beat Bobby Green, he would have to go through hell and back just to simple triangle chalk into you know and then he broke his arm as well with an arm bar great performance from paddy pimlet sleeping bobby green as well like, that was not something that was on my bingo card for ufc 304 but it was a great performance by paddy pimlet he cemented himself in the top 15 lightweight rankings and at least we have someone who's actually you know a charismatic dude in the lightweight division it's never bad to have someone who's a charismatic star in paddy pimlet it makes us want to watch his fights more often everyone's forgotten about the the fight with jared Cord gordon now and from now we get to see paddy pimlet versus guys like mike Arno, so Paddy Pimlet sleeping Bobby Green in the UK with the fashion that he did. It kind of walked the fans back up as well because it seemed like previous to the Pimlet fight, the UK crowd were asleep. So it seems like Paddy walked them back up. He's a great star. And you know what? I put him in my video where I talked about the best prospects in the UFC and everyone was saying, oh, Paddy's not a prospect. Paddy's definitely a prospect. Whether you like him or you hate him, he's on a winning streak in the UFC and he's just finished Bobby Green. So give Paddy the respect he deserves. And then at number one, the best moment to come from UFC 304 in my opinion is Tom Aspinall saving the heavyweight division. Now, I'm not going to be talking about the knockout itself because I've just done that, but the heavyweight division has finally been saved by Tom Aspinall. Had Tom Aspinall not beaten Curtis Blades, the heavyweight division would have been up in flames because there is no way that John Jones... I mean, first of all, John Jones would have been mocking Tom Aspinall all over Twitter and saying that he's the best and using this as a way to big himself up. But had Curtis Blades gone out there and beaten Tom Aspinall... John Jones would not have fought Curtis Blades because we hyped up Sergey Pavlovich. He lost, and we definitely hyped up Tom Aspinall. So if Aspinall was to lose to Curtis Blades, there ain't no way John Jones would have fought him. It would have been him versus Stipe, and then he would have probably would have held on for the belt for a longer time. And we need a star in the heavyweight division. You look at everyone in the heavyweight division, whether it be Curtis Blades, Cyril Garn, Sergey Pavlovich, Volkov, they've all lost at the highest level. These guys are not stars. A star is someone that you genuinely think is unbeatable and deserves that championship belt. All the heavyweights can't really seem to put together a bit of a streak. Aspinall's done that. I'm not counting the injury loss. Aspinall's done that. He's on a big streak in the UFC. He's cleared out the heavyweight division, and he is definitely the heavyweight star of the UFC. So for Aspinall to lose, even if he would have got his, you know, let's say he would have would have lost to Curtis Blades and then got on a three-fight winning streak, the fact that he still lost to Curtis Blades means that, you know, he's not this undefeated, well, not undefeated, but he's not this rising star that we all thought he was. So... He saved the heavyweight division. Heavyweight is already one of the worst divisions in the UFC. So for Aspinall to go out there and save it, I think it is the best moment to come from UFC 304. But that is, in my opinion, the five best and worst moments to come from UFC 304. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you agree or not. But uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts on what the best and the worst moments are. Thank you for watching.